Hey, what's going on guys? I had a recent client interaction that I kind of wanted to share with you guys to offer like a little bit of advice um, with negotiating rates with clients and when you're like just there, like you can close it but you're just a little bit high. Um, there's ways to negotiate with them without really giving up on your end or giving in to what they're telling you their budget is. And I think that's definitely comes with like a little bit of experience and a little bit of practice in these interactions and also you know I've watched plenty of videos and talked to plenty of people about how they do this too so it's uh, definitely a skill set that will in the long run help you make a little bit more money or take a little bit of risk off the business. So recently I sent over an estimate for a testimonial video it's going to be local in Florida it's maybe a half day shoot deliverables would be an edited one to two minute testimonial um, like a 30 to 60 second social cut and some photos from, from the shoot. That uh, was a little bit high for my client's budget. It was a little bit higher than I charged last year. So, so that was the first thing they said. They said, hey, we uh, noticed the rate is you know about like 400 bucks higher than it was last year. And we we're just curious why. And I told them, I said, hey, my business has grown gotten busier, I've got a lot more projects to handle, um, I've got people helping me out now so I can be more efficient and provide a better product, um, and also, you know, I was factoring a little bit of travel expense into there as well, so that kind of was like, they were like, oh, okay, cool, like, thanks for helping me understand that a little bit, and then I asked the question, is... The, the, rate, the full rate was uh, $4,500. I said, is the $4,500 out of your budget range? I'm like, ah, no, it's not really out of our budget range. Um, we were just hoping to be um, around the 4000 to 4100 for this project specifically. And it's like, okay, so we're, we're, not, we're not far off at all. Uh, and that's what the rate was last year for a similar shoot. So... Instead of saying, okay, yeah, I'll take $400 off and just make it work for you. I mean, that's 10% of the project that you'd just be giving up. Um, instead, you can trade them for things. So whenever you send an estimate, always have some scope attached to it and some deliverables attached to it because those are negotiating tools for you. So one option there would be like, hey, maybe we take that social cut off that we're going to make or hey, let's take photo out of it. Uh, out of the deliverables, you know, kind of dial back the deliverables, but I knew in this case that they weren't going to want to do that. So, there's other things you can do. One thing is adjust payment terms. Usually, I do a 50% deposit upon booking that, like, locks in the shoot date and the terms of the contract, etc., and then 50% um, once, you know, final deliverables are approved. That works great for most of the time. This client typically is a net 30 client and I knew that and it's difficult because they'll even net 30 my deposits I sent them a deposit invoice and they net 30 it which means they have 30 days to pay it and I'm like that just doesn't work like that defeats the purpose of the deposit and a lot of times I'm sending this invoice within 30 days of the shoot so it's it's kind of a long story I have, I have a relationship with this client so there's not really like a lack of trust there or anything but the net 30 thing was kind of hard to manage on my end in terms of cash flow and business process and whatnot. And that's my, you know, the 50% deposit upfront upon booking is my standard payment terms for every client. Everyone that I work with deals with that. They're looking to bring the rate down a little bit. I know that their payment terms are usually difficult to deal with. And you know, there's maybe a little, there's a little bit factored into that rate that I gave them for the whole project for me knowing that I'm gonna have to follow up like three, four times to see is this getting processed, is this getting paid, when will this be paid, and that's time. You know, that's time and time is money. So I factored a little bit of that into the kind of admin cost of the project as well. So I said instead of like dialing back the scope, like I mentioned, they I knew they wouldn't want to do that. I said, well, there is another option that we can look at to get you guys closer to that uh, number you're looking to hit for this project. If you guys want to pay up front, in full up front, that'd be great. I can knock off like five to 10% for you and we can 
get this project done, get all the contract terms locked in and good to go. They had also mentioned a couple other testimonials that they wanted to do this year. So the, so the other option was, hey, I know you guys want to do a couple testimonials this year. If you want to book a couple together, say two or three, and put them all in one contract, sign and commit to all of them this year with me, I can come down on the price a little bit per video, and that way it makes your cost per testimonial video lower. So those were the two options. So here you go. Try them out, and you know, the, the uh, client when I was talking to them, they're like, oh, thank you so much for being flexible and whatnot and finding ways to make this work. And I said, yeah, of course, you know, go talk to your manager and let me know what you think and let me know how it goes, and we'll, we'll go from there. So in the end, they came back and texted me later that day and was like, hey, you know, we'd love to just take advantage of the paying upfront on this one because we can't like get the other testimonial client to like commit to a shoot date or anything yet. So we're just going to do this one right now for now and we'll, we'll take the little discount and that'll put it right on my budget. It'll be great. I said, great. Do you want to pay with credit card or how do you want to pay? Um, they're like, ACH, perfect. All right, I'll send over that link later to pay that that invoice in full up front. The lesson here is, yes, I came down a little bit on my price, but I traded for something. I traded them the headache of chasing them down for invoicing and payment and checking in on the status of it. I traded all that time that I would have lost and wasted following up with them, emailing, getting in contact with their accounting, making sure it's like moving along so I can get paid for the work that I've done. I traded them for a little bit discount and now that money's gonna all be in my account right up front and I don't even have to worry about it. That is negotiating. That is extremely powerful in a one way where you can take these objections that clients have, like, ah, oh, it's a little bit high or it's a little bit beyond our budget and get them to give you something in return for you lowering your price a little bit on a project. Two years ago when I was doing this, I probably would have just said, well, okay, I'll do it for 4,100. Or I'll, I'll take you know 10% off to make it fit your budget and we'll just make it happen because I like you. There's a time and a place for that, but that is not the best business practice. That kind of sets the tone for the relationship as well, where they can push you and know that you'll budge on stuff if you set them up to know that if they're going to push, you're going to kind of, you know, stand your ground a little bit and trade versus just give in to their their request and their their budget. If you essentially train them in your interaction with them that if they push you on your rate, you are going to push them on something else to make sure that we keep this relationship fair. That will benefit you in the long term. So I think that's a valuable lesson and something that I want to make sure other production companies and even freelancers know out there because it's really just staying calm in the scenario and making smart decisions in terms of how to reply and how to respond to clients that push you on your rates and your project pricing and, and whatnot. So hope that's helpful. In the next couple weeks I'm hoping to make a couple more videos about just these things that are popping up. As, a, as I'm growing, as I'm working with different clients, new clients, uh, I've got some big projects in the works that I'm looking forward to sharing kind of the process. Some of them include creative development, uh, multiple day productions, um, you know, bringing freelancers and traveling with other freelancers out to projects. Um, how do we take big clients and like synthesize what they're trying to do with a video into something that's manageable with their budget and this within the scope of production that they can afford. Um, so stay tuned for that and uh, yeah, we'll sit down together sometime soon. Just get out there, friends.